Hello students, welcome back to JC eConnect series of lectures. In previous class and all, we have discussed about the types of wears and wear definition that is uh, the types of wears based on the shape of opening and based on the shape of crust that is we have classified as a sharp crusted wear, broad crusted wear, narrow crusted wear and ogee shaped wear. So these uh, we have discussed in previous uh, session. Applications also we have discussed and uh, today is, uh, let us uh, discuss about the broad crusted wear. As the name itself indicates the crust is broader or wider. So the crust means the top portion of the uh, wear, this one, the top portion, this is what we call as a crust of the wear. If this crust is uh, a broader or a wider, then the uh, wear is called as broad crusted wear. As we discussed in the previous uh, session, based on the B by H ratio, based on B by H ratio, that is, uh, if we take this as a width of the wear, and H means the head above the crust this is H that is head over the crust or height of water above the crust. If we take the ratio of these two that is B by H, if it comes out to be more than 2.5 then that wear is called as broad crusted wear. And uh, if B by H ratio is less than 0.625 less than 0.625 is called as a narrow crusted wear sorry sharp crusted wear and if b by h ratio is in between 0.625 and 2.5 that is called as a narrow crusted wear so here in today's session we will be deriving the equation for uh, rate of flow for a broad crusted wear that is a Q only the equation and uh, will derive the equation for the Q. So here the broad crusted wears support the flow in the longitudinal direction. So this is the longitudinal direction. They are used where sharp crusted wears may have maintenance problems then the nape of the broad crusted wear does not spring free means if you take the sharp crusted wear and all so it is the sharp crusted wear the nape will be falling freely like this will be feel, uh, falling freely but in case of this one it is not falling freely like a sharp crusted wear so let us uh, derive the equation for discharge over a broad crusted wear. Consider a broad crusted wear as uh, oh, I have shown the broad crusted wear uh, picture here. So this is the broad crusted wear picture. You can uh, see here this one broad crusted wear. A wear having a wide crust, a wear having a wide crust is known as a broad crusted wear. So let us take the H, capital H, so as height of water above the crust and L represents here the L, the length of the crust or it can be taken as a B also sometimes. So here it is considered as a length here or sometimes it will be considered as B b or l okay so l represents the length of the crust then 
so as we have classified the uh, wear based on the b by h ratio we have seen b by h ratio or l by h ratio here it is considered as a l you may take l so here if 2 l is greater than h okay or you can take it as l by h is greater than 2 the wear is called as a broad crusher wear so you have taken the b by h ratio is greater than 2.5 2.5 it is considered as a broad crusted wear or if it is less than uh, 2.5 it is considered as a narrow crusted wear okay just it's a classification based on l by h or b by h ratio next let the small h represents this small h represents the head of water at the middle of the wear which is constant Okay, throughout the length of the wear, this head will be constant from here to here. It will be a constant. Okay, v is the velocity of flow over the wear. Means at this portion, if you take, there is a flow of water. We get okay. The water is moving with uh, uh, very high velocity, so it is moving. It will be having a velocity here. so velocity of flow over the wear then applying the bernoulli's equation to the still water surface on the upstream side so this side means on the this side it is called as upstream side this side it is called as a downstream side so before the water passing over the wear it is called as upstream side then on the down side means after passing the water over the wear whatever the water uh, moves it is called as a downstream it is a downside and it is the upside it is called as upstream and it is called as a downstream applying bernoulli's equation uh, i think uh, this bernoulli's uh, uh, in detail about the bernoulli's equation we will discuss uh, later in a, in a chapter that is a dynamics of fluid flow uh, but we will uh, take the equation of bernoulli's here and uh, will apply that equation for this uh, uh, wear that is a discharge derivation for a uh, broad pressure wear so bernoulli's equation means just for bernoulli's equation it is a energy equation so here we have to take the two sections let us consider section 1 that is a before the water flowing over the wear if let us call this is section 1 or section 1 1 and one more section uh, call at this portion here one more section that is 2 2 on the downstream side okay so applying bernoulli's equation to the still water surface on the upstream side and running water at the end of the wear means here the water is running so here since the depth of water here if you take the depth of water here it is more so we call the here uh, the water is uh, in a still condition means we assume that the water is uh, not having any velocity here but the as the water approaches the wear so suddenly it uh, the drops here see the see it will be having a uh, same depth till here then suddenly it drops means there is there is a velocity here and it is uh, just uh, acts as a obstruction okay so suddenly the water will be moving very fast and uh, we are assuming that here it is having a velocity and there is a drop here so then is a, there is a drop in the energy of flow fluid okay so we need to calculate energy at section 1 and energy at section 2 for calculation of that energy we use the bernoulli's equation so it is it will be having a pressure energy p by gamma plus velocity energy that is kinetic energy p square by 2g plus potential energy that is z so all together what we call as a energy at section 1 okay similarly energy at section 2 will be that is p2 by gamma here we are applying for section 1 we call it as a 1 and next p2 by gamma plus p2 square by 2g plus 
plus z2 so for time being you remember just the equation is Bernoulli's equation is this one so this is the energy equation we use so you have to remember p1 by gamma plus p1 square by 2g plus z1 that is energy at 1 is equal to energy at 2 okay means uh, the Bernoulli's uh, equation says for an uh, ideal incompressible uh, fluid the energy will be remains constant okay so as the water starts flowing it will be having a uh, energy that is a pressure energy kinetic energy and potential energy the sum of all what we call as a total energy the total energy will be same okay along the direction of flow whenever, whenever you take at section 1 2 3 4 what the Bernoulli says the total energy across the sections remains same that is for an ideal incompressible uh, fluid uh, the total energy will be remains same that is you can take section 1 2 3 4 like this you make all the energy at 1 is e1 energy at 2 is e2 and e3 and so on if you calculate energy at 1 the energy at 1 will be having a pressure energy p1 by gamma plus v1 square by 2g plus z1 so means z1 is the datum energy so pressure energy because of the pressure it gains the energy because of the velocity it gains the kinetic energy because of the position it gains the potential energy the sum of all what we call as a total energy at section 1 similarly you have to calculate energy at 2 similarly at energy at 3 for an ideal incompressible fluid the energy will remain same that is energy at 1 is equal to energy at 2 like this if it is a for real fluid the fluid those fluid which possess the viscosity and all so the energy will not be same at 1 and 2 or 3 it will be decreasing along the direction of flow so since here uh, we are applying at section 1 and 2 the energies that is energy at 1 is p1 by gamma plus v1 square by 2g plus z1 means z1 means if you, if you take this as a reference point this is as a datum just look at here this is a datum with respect to this the height of the wear height of the crust is a z and above the crust the height is height of water is h okay then again this is a z and this is small h now let us apply this equation at still water position and also the uh, running water position so here at 1 we are considering water is in a still condition even though it has a velocity but it is almost negligible here the water particle will not be moving yet it is starting from here suddenly the water is uh, height of the water is dropping and water is moving in this direction so here it is having a velocity here so at this position as well as this position we'll apply the Bernoulli's equation and, and uh, we'll derive the equation so here the pressure means the at, there will be atmosphere pressure acting at one uniformly over here also the atmosphere pressure is acting over here since it uh, which is open channel flow since it is open to the atmosphere then the pressure acting on the surface will be atmospheric open uh, which is open channel flow then what is the pressure here you can call it as atmospheric pressure here as well as at section 2 uh, which is also atmospheric pressure so both will get cancelled so as I said here the section 1 it is a still water so since it is a still water the velocity also we are assuming that 0 ok so the first term has cancelled because of atmospheric pressure it is a uniform at section 1 as well as section 2 both sides the pressure is same hence it has got cancelled here and if you take the Z1 the position of section 1 if you take this position here I am considering the uh, section 1 uh, then the position will be what z plus h you can write it as a z plus h z plus h at this position 
and if you take this side if you look at the section 2 is there any velocity of fluid here yes there is a velocity of fluid at section 2 hence that can be written as v2 square by 2g then it is a position of z2 z2 will be what z plus h small h z plus h like this okay then the z z get cancels again so the final equation you get just simplify this one it will get cancels okay i'll show here i hope you understood this one So let us look here. The finally, you will get the <coughs> equation this one. So as I said, 0, 0 here, 0. Then h is equal to v square divided by 2j plus h. So after cancelling those terms, you will get finally v square by 2g h minus h. Okay. I hope you understood this one. So let us move to the next one. So here, so if we simplify the previous one, the previous uh, term if you simplify here v square this term if you simplify you will get this one v equal to root of 2g h minus h then as we know the discharge equation as we know the discharge equation discharge equation the discharge over the variable is what cd into area of flow into velocity so area of flow that is if this is the vf if you take the area of flow means this is the height and this is the length okay the area of flow can be taken as l into h l length into small h will be the area of flow into velocity velocity already we have calculated here substitute this term here so cd into l into h into velocity then take this term inside you will get this term just simplify this one okay if this q to be maximum this is the equation for q as we know the equation q equal to a into v so for the actual discharge we have taken the cd value that is the coefficient of discharge then a equal to what area of flow v is the velocity then the area of flow is what l into h then this is the velocity then if the q to be maximum if if we want to make the q maximum uh, these all terms are constant this is this is constant and also this is constant only this is the variable one okay this term should be maximum if q to be maximum and q is directly proportional to this head of the water hence if anything any changes occurs in depth of flow automatically the q get changes hence the q is directly proportional to this one the discharge will be maximum if h h square minus h cube is maximum just look at this one the, this is maximum the discharge is maximum okay then differentiate this term with respect to h means the depth of flow it is varying so this is a variable so d by dh and if differentiate this one if you differentiate this one finally you will get h equal to this term then once we get this one just you simplify this one you will get this h equal to two third of h then q max will be obtained then finally you have to get the q max substitute that values here that is h equal to 2 by 3 substituting this value of h in the above equation then q max whatever the q max you get here so simplify this one you will get if you simplify this one uh, substitute the value of this and simplify this one after simplifying you will get uh, just go on simplifying this one go on substitute that h equal to two third of capital h finally you will get the value as 1.705 cd into l h raised to 3 by 2 okay this is the equation sorry okay so finally you will get this is the equation just simplify this this is the q equation we get for the broad crested vf okay i hope you understood this one so again 